She, uh, can we? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Give me one moment. All right, I do have uh, two relatively simple amendments to the Transportation Improvement Program for you this morning. These are actually one item impacting two projects in the TIP. Uh, so this would be a transfer of $12.8 million in faster funding from the Region 1 faster pool to the I-70 resurfacing project from Chief Hosa to West Colfax in Golden. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions about that. Um, otherwise, I do have a recommendation available for you in your packet. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Brad Williams, planner with Dr. Cog. Uh, today we'll be going over the FY23 first year TIP project delays. Current TIP policy outlines the expectations for the initiation of project phases, including how to address delays if they happen. These delays, regardless of the reason, tie up the limited funding available for Dr. Cog to allocate. At the end of federal fiscal year 23 in early October, Dr. Cog requested CDOT and RTD review the statuses that we've collected from sponsors over this year for projects with FY23 funding. After confirming the project statuses, Dr. Cog's staff contacted the sponsors with project phases that were not initiated and therefore de delayed to determine the reason for their delayed FY23 phase, to discover the current status of the project, and to assist them in developing a plan to initiate the delayed phase. To avoid a second year delay, all, year, all projects identified in this report must initiate their delay phase by July 1st, 2024. The attached report summarizes project phases that were delayed as of October 1st. Overall, this, pro this report states that 35 projects were first year delayed, of which three have already been initiated and are no longer delayed. New observations concerning the delays are that the number of delays is approximately double what we would expect in a normal year. This is primarily due to the busier than normal call for project cycle, which caused the IGA process to be slowed down by the increased amount of projects 
requiring clearances, IGA execution, and amendments over the same short period of time. When looking at the other details as to why the projects are delayed, roughly half are directly due to the slowdowns and many others suffered from the cascading effects that caused delays in the clearance and um, utility coordination process. A motion to approve the staff's recommendation would allow these projects to continue. And before we get to any questions or anything, I'd like to thank everyone and all the sponsors involved for uh, assisting us in implementing our new uh, TIP status project tracking system that helped us be significantly more prepared heading into the delay process this year. So with that, I'll take any questions. Good morning and thank you, Chair. Um, my name is Kaylee Fallon. I am the Emerging Mobility and TDM Planner here at Dr. Cog um, with some exciting updates to the Transportation Demand Management um, Strategic Plan. Um, so just to kind of refresh everyone's um, summary as to um, why we are doing the regional TDM strategic plan now, um, kind of the purpose and, and goals of the plan. Um, and so really this plan is an overhaul to Dr. Cog's short-range TDM plan, um, and this was influenced by recent changes in travel um, behavior due to the pandemic, due to changing technology, um, due to changing demographics in the region. Um, so we really felt as though um, this was a, a, a pivotal time to um, update our, our regional TDM plan and um, produce this uh, strategic plan. Um, so we really want to highlight the equity component of the um, plan's um, purpose. Um, and so you'll see up on the screen um, just kind of a, a recap of the mission statement of the plan, um, but really want to highlight um, the improving efficiency, mobility, and safety for travelers of all ages, incomes, and abilities. We worked really hard with stakeholders and our consultants to make sure that equity is woven throughout um, both the plan and the toolkit. We really wanted to highlight that this is for all travelers, regardless of socioeconomic status. So really just wanted to um, point that that um, that sentence out in our in our mission. Um, so this is a culmination of an 18th month planning process, um, and the strategic plan was created through multiple different avenues. Um, that's including our stakeholder steering committee input. Um, so again, those folks that were on the stakeholder steering committee work in um, transportation demand management day in and day out. Those are our TMA partners, um, RQD, CDOT, um, those regional transportation folks that were on um, that committee. Um, we also held focus groups, so individualized focus groups. Um, we had focus groups with um, large regional employers. We had focus groups with business improvement districts. Um, we had focus groups with are um, more rural and um, small communities in the Dr. Cog region. Um, we had an equity focus group, so really a variety of focus groups that led us um, into this planning process. Um, we also had a Dr. Cog internal staff workshop that was led by our consultant, um, and of course our consultant-led research and analysis um, in which they did the existing conditions, looked at case studies not only throughout Colorado but throughout um, the rest of the, the country, um, and then the consult consultants also performed a um, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, a return on investment, and equity analysis. So all of these processes came together in order to um, create the strategic plan. Um, and so when looking at um, the region as a whole and looking at um, considerations or, or challenges that our region is facing and where can transportation demand management really play a key role in these challenges. Um, and so the plan highlights um, these, these challenges, and that's including population growth, traffic congestion, 
safety and business zero, transit access, of course, the ongoing impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic, and then, like I mentioned earlier, um, really the, the new transportation technology and innovation um, emerging mode. So we were really looking at our region um, and the challenges that face it and where, where can transportation demand management play a key role in providing solutions, and um, these were the considerations that came to the top of the plan. Um, so really want to emphasize that the plan recommendations are for um, are intended for Dr. Cog to lead and implement alongside regional partners. Um, of course, we won't be able to implement these recommendations without our partners, but they're really for Dr. Cog as an organization. So we looked at um, Dr. Cog's policies, services, and planning when it comes to transportation demand management, and looked at where can we um, either improve those planning policy or services. Where can we expand that? Um, essentially, how can we broaden our definition of TDM, recognizing um, that TDM encompasses a suite of strategies. So um, we all know that historically, Dr. Cog has um, pretty much focused on the education, outreach, and marketing side of TDM um, and services, which has um, been really important. But we wanted to make sure that as an organization, how can we um, broaden our scope of TDM? Um, and so that will really, really expand and advance um, our TDM work that we do here at Dr. Talk. So these are the final plan recommendations. There are a total of 10 recommendations. Again, they fall into three categories of planning, policy, or services. Um, for the sake of time, we won't read all 10 recommendations word for word, but they are in your packet um, should you um, want to read those. Really want to just highlight a few, um, especially this first one here prepare a white paper that explores ways to fund um, TDM incentive programs. We heard from our stakeholders, especially um, stakeholder steering committee, that um, incentive funding or funding for incentives has been a huge challenge for them. And so um, we're really excited that this is a recommendation that came out of that plan, um, kind of you know, highlights that we, we took that stakeholder feedback and really incorporated it into these recommendations. Um, I also just want to highlight that um, a lot of these recommendations um, either start with preparing or considering. Um, so looking at like recommendation number four, it's considering integrating TDM or TDM as a requirement for certain um, chip projects. So want to clarify that that is not um, let's go ahead and integrate TDM requirements right off the bat, but let's consider what that might look like, how that might work. So. I um, just want to clarify that a lot of these are looking at um, research, preparing, um, supporting, and considerations. They're not necessarily um, we're, we're going to be doing these things right off the bat. We're going to be looking at, looking at if we do this, how can we do it, how might it work, and how can we best um, do that. So just wanted to clarify that because I know that there was uh, perhaps some confusion around those. Um, and so then these are the last half of the recommendations. Um, I do want to highlight, again, another really exciting one is explore the opportunities to reduce or remove the local match requirements for TDM set-aside projects that benefit marginalized communities. Um, we heard a lot about this from our equity focus groups as well as our TMAs, um, that the, the local match can be a big barrier for those projects benefiting marginalized communities. Um, and so we came up with the recommendation to, again, explore those opportunities, um, see if that's even possible, what it might look like. Um, but it is really exciting that we are moving in that direction to reduce those barriers. So that is the plan itself. Again, it encompasses 10 recommendations for Dr. Cog to lead and implement. And then a um, separate supporting document is our TDM toolkit. Um, so this is separate from the plan, but it is intended to be a living resource for our member governments and stakeholders. Um, it encompasses a variety of TDM strategies across different land use contexts falling into these categories. So we have mobility services and mobility technology. Um, we have strategies under transportation infrastructure and parking management. Of course, incentives for mode shifts, roadway management, policies and ordinances, um, employer-based strategies, as well as, again, that traditional education outreach and marketing. Um, so really want to highlight that this toolkit is intended to um, evolve as new strategies are updated and as um, new technologies become available. And, and as we engage in that dialogue with our member governments and our stakeholders, um, this toolkit will really be um, a living resource. So we'll be updating that and making adjustments as needed. 
Um, so each strategy in the TDM toolkit includes a description of what that strategy is, a context um, indicator for land use, transit access, types of audiences. So those audiences include um, they include um, visitors, they include commuters, they include students, um, and then infrastructure in terms of if there is um, you know high quality or abundant. Um, bicycle or pedestrian infrastructure. So we really wanted to make sure that this toolkit um, was, we really wanted to make sure that the, the toolkit addressed a variety of different um, contexts, recognizing that um, all of our, our member governments are unique and um, different in terms of transit access, land use, and um, different types of infrastructures. And again, really highlighting the equity component of the toolkit, we used um, the FHWA steps methodology. So there are equity considerations for each of the TDM strategies in the toolkit, as well as different case studies and resources um, from both around the region, around Colorado, and then um, outside of Colorado as well. So really um, intending this to be a comprehensive resource for TDM strategies to implement those TDM strategies for our member governments and other um, TDM stakeholders in the region. So I won't go through all these, but this is just um, a, an overview of the strategies that are currently included in the TDM toolkit. Again, um, these will be able, we will be updating these um, as, as needed and as we um, engage in that dialogue with our stakeholders. And finally, just want to go over the public comment period. Um, so there was a public comment period hosted through um, an online website, Social Pinpoint, and also through email. Um, that was a month long, so it um, started on October 2nd and went through the 31st. Um, on the Social Pinpoint website, the TDM draft plan, draft toolkit, and an executive summary, as well as an executive summary in Spanish were available. Um, for the public to go on the website, download, and read. Um, and then, as you'll see on the left-hand side here, a, a screen grab of the Social Pinpoint website. Um, there were two specific questions that we had prompted the public and then um, a general, um, general feedback as well. Um, we also held a stakeholder steering committee meeting during the public comment period, so we were able to get um, direct feedback from our stakeholder steering committee as well as feedback from the public. And some highlights on what we heard through public comment the most. Um, we did hear that intelligent transportation systems are generally a TDM supportive strategy. In the draft toolkit, we had ITS as a standalone strategy. And so um, through that public comment, because we got several comments um, indicating that people felt as though that should be um, more of a, a strategy that's weaved throughout different TDM strategies. Um, that is what we did. So we um, removed ITS as a standalone strategy and we weaved um, components of ITS throughout different TDM strategies. We also heard from several um, public comments and stakeholders the importance of telework, flexible schedules, and remote work. Um, and in the draft toolkit, we had um, references, of course, to Telework, but we did not have that as a standalone strategy. So again, we went ahead and responded to those comments and made sure that we had um, emphasis on Telework and flexible schedules as a standalone TDM strategy. And then some other comments, we, we heard a lot about equity. Um, we heard some comments about mobility hubs and stakeholders wanting to see uh, more references to working with regional partners on um, implementing mobility hubs. And then of course we did hear um, public comments and concerns around um, transit ridership and safety. So um, all of this is just to say that we did update um, the, both the plan and toolkit based on public comments and wanted to highlight um, the public comments that we heard the most of. So looking ahead and moving forward with the plan, I um, want to highlight the cross-divisional work within Dr. Cog that um, the plan the plan will require. So not only will um, the recommendations highlighted in the plan um, be carried out by our, our staff on the Transportation Planning and Operations Division, um, but of course we'll be working with our Communications and Marketing Division, um, our Way to Go team, and our Regional Planning and Development. Um, so this plan is great because it encompasses all the different divisions within Dr. Cog and, and working together to really um, implement those recommendations and move the needle um, for Dr. Cog's CDM work. So with that, I have a proposed motion on the screen, but happy to take any questions or comments.
Great. Thanks for that question. And, and just for audio issues, I'm going to repeat back the question because I think some folks on Zoom might be having some difficulties with that. But um, So your question is, have we been considering in-kind donations um, for that recommendation that was um, considering removing the local match for those PDM set-aside projects that benefit marginalized communities? Um, and I would say that is definitely something that we will consider when we look at that further. Um, there's definitely been talk about that, but of course, um, we haven't quite gone into what that might look like, but definitely we'll be considering that when we look at um, what that might look like when we're removing those um, local matches. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for your question. You do raise um, an excellent point. And of course, post-COVID, um, travel has changed a lot. So um, I just want to turn your attention to number nine of the TDM strategic plan recommendations is to expand the focus of way to go to include all trips. 
So in light of that, recognizing that um, way to go is our TDM um, service of Dr. Cog that provides um, van pool services, carpool matching, transit help to employers. But um, we really looked at that in consideration and decided that um, it was really important to expand the focus of way to go to include all trips, not just those um, peak commuter trips. So that is one of the plan recommendations is to recognize that um, a lot of those trips now in a post-COVID world and in, in, in a world where um, folks have access to remote work is to look at all those trips. Um, but at the same time, also recognizing from an equity perspective that not all folks have access to remote work. So do want to still include those commuters who do um, have to um, drive in or take transit to the workplace. So um, yes, definitely hear your concern. We definitely um, recognize that that is woven into our plan recommendations. And then furthermore, the toolkit does highlight different um, audiences. So it's not just commuters, um, but also looks at visitors, recognizing um, that Colorado and the Denver region does have a, a very high level of um, recreation. We attract a lot of visitors. So looking at those folks as well, um, looking at students, looking at um, residents in general. So we have just like a residence category. So um, those folks that you're kind of um, speaking to, they're not maybe not commuters, but they do live here, they do take transit, or they do uh, move within the region. So um, to answer your question, yes, we definitely consider that. We are aware of that, and um, we wove that into both the plan and the toolkit. Yeah, so I will do my best to answer your question, and then I'll let um, Emily Lindsay step in if I miss anything. But um, I think because as an organization, Dr. Cog represents 54 different municipalities, um, recognizing that we're all really different, that that's really hard uh, for Dr. Cog to put into a toolkit as here step by step by step that would work for every single municipality. Um, so to answer your question, no. That's not included, um, but I think that as an organization, again, like I said, it, it would be really difficult to make, I, I, we, would, we would have to perhaps make several different toolkits. So we want to make sure that we have this balance for the toolkit that um, is broad enough where all of our member governments find it really useful, um, but of course isn't super broad where it isn't useful. So um, that was kind of the challenge of the toolkit is where is that line and, and how do we figure that out? But um, I think we did a really good job with this toolkit in hitting all the different um, contexts for all of our different member governments. Thank you. 
<laughs> and I'll, I'll revise my answer to yes as well, actually. Um, if you look at the second strategic recommendation, and I'm, I'm so sorry, but this is definitely relevant, um, establish a transportation demand management technical assistance program. So that would be building on the toolkit. And if a, a local government or member government wanted to come to us with more specialized assistance, that's what that technical assistance program would do. So uh, revising my answer. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much for that question. So um, just going to pull up the, the toolkit strategies um, categories here and, and point you to under public policies and ordinances. Um, we did include a new development and transportation oriented development section. Um, so the public comment that you're referring to, I believe, was on our draft toolkit in which um, transportation oriented development was not a standalone strategy. Um, I think it was um, kind of, um, it was referenced in several other strategies, but due to public comment and us looking at the draft and, and seeing how can we um, strengthen this draft, what needs to be added, um, COD was certainly on that list. So we did add it to the final version of the toolkit. Um, and then again, just want to say that the toolkit is a living document, so we will be, a, it's an evolution, so we will be adding to it as well. But yes, yeah, it is on the toolkit as of now. Yeah, 
Yeah, absolutely. So elaborating on the EcoPath district creation, um, the toolkit strategy goes through examples of, I believe they use um, a neighborhood in Boulder um, that that did that, so um, it kind of walks you through how you might do that, what the benefits are. Um, so it is just kind of a high-level overview of um, what that might look like. Um, I believe that it um, kind of oriented towards um, community-based organizations or neighborhoods that um, would take that initiative. Thank you. Thank you.
ada di bulan kedua. Here up. the mix bag for a Before we can go that um, oh, really. I would just like to ask. Uh, 